My name is Alexander Stancescu. I am a data analyst at PT Provider and certified Tableau Qualified Associate. Today I'll be continuing the previous skill pill that was control charts by creating a Bollinger Band for the same data. So what is a Bollinger Band? Well, it's still a type of control chart, but instead of using an average across all our data, we'll be rather be using a moving average. A moving average looks back a certain period uh, of time. So let's say you wanted to look back 10 weeks. So for each point, you would look back 10 points and do the average for those 10 points plus your uh, current week. Okay, so let's start a new sheet. And let's look again at our order date at the week level and profit on rows. So we get the same line chart. And just like with the control chart, let's change this to a circle. Now, I want the user to be able to control how many periods he's looking back into the data, so computing the moving average. So we'll create a parameter called look back period, which will be an integer, let's say a default 20, and it will be a range from 1 to 50. So we have that here. Again, just like with any uh, lower bounds, upper bounds, we need standard deviations. We already have the parameter controlling the number of standard deviations here, so we don't need to create that again. Now let's actually create our moving average calculation. So we'll create a calculated field called moving average, which will have the formula similar to what we had previously, so window average using sum of profit, but this time we will specify when this average is starting and when it's ending. So for start, we'll be using minus look back period, so minus 20, and for end, zero. So this gets me for any point the average of the previous 20 values plus the one. Now let's also create the standard deviation. So we'll duplicate this field and edit it because the syntax is similar and we only change this to window standard deviation. Let's call this standard deviation. Now just like in the control chart we need an upper bound and a lower bound. So let's create a calculated field called lower bound Bollinger this time because we have also the previous field. And it will be our moving average from which we'll subtract the standard deviations multiplied by our parameter which controls how many standard deviations we are we want. Let's duplicate this again so we get a new field, we edit it and we change the sign from a minus to a plus and rename it to upper bound Bollinger and remove the copy. So now we have all our elements. Just like previously, I'll be using measure values, dragging it onto rows. We get again this constellation of points. And we'll be keeping our lower bound Bollinger, our moving average, the actual profit and the upper bound for the Bollinger. So only four fields will be keeping. So now we get this. Let's change the mark for measure values from a circle to a line. And again, just like previously in control charts, make the line very small. You see, we are getting these nulls. That's happening because for the first point of the data, it can't look back into nothing. So it's not computing the average, the moving average for the first point, which is totally fine. Now let's enable a dual axis, synchronize our axis, and bring the circles to the front. Good. 
Now I want to color my lines based on measure name, so based on what KPI it is. Now let's edit the colors. So I want my upper bound Bollinger to be a dark gray, my lower bound Bollinger to be a dark gray because I want to see it. Profit I want it to be a very light gray, and the actual moving average I want it to stick out, so I'll use a green. So it so it's visible in all this gray. Again, I can help the user by adding color to these points. So just like in control chart, we can, we can create a outliers field. So we'll do an outliers. Bollinger. We will compare the sum of profit if it's higher than our upper bound Bollinger, or if the sum of profit is smaller than our lower bound Bollinger. Now let's drag this onto color for the circles for sum of profit. And again, you see we get we are getting three variations. So true if it's higher, false if it's within the two bounds, or null for the first case, which is an exception. Let's modify the colors. So if it's true, yeah, I want red. I want it to stick out. If it's false, I want the same color as profit. So a very light gray and null just to make it irrelevant. Now we get a different picture from our control chart. So we're taking into consideration the fluctuations for 20 weeks. If I want to look back a different uh, number of weeks rather than 20, I can right click the parameter, look back period, then show parameter control, and then I can play with the look back period. I can also modify the parameter to be a type in and I can look back for weeks or for weeks. Bollinger bands are generally used in um, stock exchange. They're used to detect fluctuations in closing prices or uh, opening prices. They're also used in finance um, and they have been used for, to detect anomalies in any manufacturing process for a plant or any system that is constantly feeding data, data that can be uh, quantified. So that's how you do a, a Bollinger Band and some of the use cases for it. Thank you, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us.